Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. On today's tutorial, I will demonstrate how to draft, cut and sew an all-round built-up neckline with that. Hi, my name is Ayo and welcome to 011 Clothing Tutorials. On this channel, I upload DIYs, pattern drafting and sewing tutorials. If you haven't subscribed yet, kindly do so. And do not forget to turn on the notification bell so that you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video. So now, let's get right into the tutorial. Thank you! I'll be working with the following items. Tape measure. Pins. Water erasable fabric pencil. Ideally, a pencil should be used to draft a pattern but for tutorial purpose, I'll be using this marker pen, a pair of paper scissors, a pair of fabric scissors, rulers and cuffs, calculator, one yard of this plain black fabric, my basic bodice pattern. These are the fronts and the back basic bodice patterns, which I drafted using the Bozda technique. I have not drawn out the necklines and this is because I have to calculate the exact front and the back neckline dimensions. For the front neckline, I will divide my bust circumference by 12. You set 9 inches divided by 12 and this is equal to 3.25 inches. So for the front neck width, I will use a value of 3.25 inches. And for the front neck dates, I will also use 3.25 inches. For the back, the neck width is also 3.25 inches, while the back neck dates is 3.25 inches divided by 3, and this is equal to 1.08 inches, and I will approximate this value to 1 inch. I will now go ahead and draw out the front and the back necklines using these values that I just calculated. On the back pattern, from the center, I will measure and mark 1.5 inches on the neckline. I will connect the 1.5 inch point to the tip of the waist dart like this using my ruler. I will slash it open like this. I will place another paper underneath the slash. Then I will close part of the waist dart till I have a 1 inch opening at the neckline. I will cello tape it in place like this. From the neck point, I will measure and mark 2 inches upwards like this. I will connect the points together with broken lines like this. Then I will draw another broken line horizontally towards the center back like this. I will connect it downwards to the zip allowance at the center back like this. From this point, I will measure and mark one inch inwards like this. From the neck point, I will measure and mark one inch on the shoulder line. I will now connect these two points together like this using a French curve to create the outer edge of the built up neckline. I will come down by half an inch at this side. I 
I will now connect these two points together like this using a curve. It is now time to create the dart at the neckline. I will locate and mark the middle point of the neckline of me. Next, I will draw a broken line from the tip of the waist dart to the top of the built up neckline passing through the middle point that I've already marked. I will now connect the two sides of the neckline opening to the point where the broken line meets the built up neckline at the top. So now I have created the upper half of the neckline dart. I will now measure the length of the upper half of the dart. And this gave me a value of 2.5 inches. The lower half of the neckline should also be 2.5 inches long. So I will measure and mark 2.5 inches from the base of the neckline downwards on the broken line. I will now connect the 2.5 inch point on the broken line to the two sides of the neckline opening like this. So now I have successfully created the neckline dart for the back pattern and it will be sewn in place on the fabric. I will now go ahead and cut out the back pattern like this. This is the front basic bodice pattern. And from the center front, on the front neckline curve, I'll measure and mark 2 inches, like this. I'll connect these 2 inch points to the tip of the waist dart, like this. I'll slash it open like this. I'll place another paper underneath it. Then I'll close part of the bust dart till I have a 1 inch opening at the neckline. Then I will cello tape it in place like this. From the base of the front neckline curve, I will measure and mark 2 inches upwards like this. From the neck point, I will draw a broken line upwards like this. On the broken line, I will measure and mark 2 inches upwards from the neck point. From the 2 inch point, I will go in by 1 inch. From the neck point, I will measure and mark 2 inches on the shoulder line. I will now connect these two points together like this with a curve to create the outer edge of the built up neckline. I will also connect these two points together like this with a curve to create the top edge of the built up neckline. I will locate and mark the middle point of the front neckline opening. I will now draw a broken line from the top edge of the built up neckline to the tip of the waist dart passing through the middle point that I've already marked. Next, I will connect the two sides of the neckline opening to the point where the broken line meets the top edge of the built up neckline. I have created the upper half of the front neckline dart. I will now measure the length of the upper half of the dart and this gave me a value of 2.5 inches. So I will measure and mark 2.5 inches from the base of the neckline downwards on the broken line. I will now connect the two sides of the neckline opening like this. And I have successfully created the neckline dart for the front pattern. It will be stitched in place on the fabric. I will now cut out the front pattern.
Next, I will compare the lengths of the front and the back shoulder lines. The front is a little bit longer, so I will adjust it and trim it off. So these are the front and the back pattern pieces which I'm going to guide and cut out on my fabric. This is the front piece. I used a phoenix seam allowance all around the pattern except for the side seam where I used one inch side seam allowance. I will now cut it out. This is the back piece. I used half an inch seam allowance all around the pattern except for the side seam where I used one inch side seam allowance. There is already one inch zip allowance at the center back so there is no need for any seam allowance at the center back. I will now cut it out. So now, as you can see, I've gone ahead to cut out the front and the back neckline facings and I've also already fused into facing to the wrong sides of the facing pieces. I will now transfer the exact position of the front neckline darts to the fabric like this using pins and my fabric pencil. So these are the two positions of the front neckline darts which I'm going to sew in place on the sewing machine. I will repeat the same thing for the back pieces as well. I will also do the same thing for the facing pieces as well. I have knocked the position of the waist dart at the end of the back pieces. I still have a tiny dart left after transferring parts of the waist dart to the neckline. This is the front piece. I will go ahead and sew all the boss darts and the waist darts in place. The dart positions have been transferred to the, back, to the fabric. So now I have sticked the waist and the bust that in place. The next thing to do is to sew the neckline darts in place following the markings that I've already made on the fabric. I will do the same thing for the back pieces as well. and also the front and the back neckline facing pieces. So now the stitching has been done as you can see. I will now go ahead and trim the darts 
to about one quarter of an inch on the wrong side of the fabric. After trimming all the darts, I will go ahead and iron all the pieces very well, especially at the dart positions. These two pieces are for the front. I will now place the front neckline facing on top of the front piece like this, right side to right side. I will paint the necklines in place. After painting, I will take it to my sewing machine and I will stitch it in place using half an inch sewing allowance. These are the back pieces. I will now place the back facing pieces on top of the back pieces like this, right side to right side. I will paint the necklines in place. After painting in place, I will take the pieces to my sewing machine and I will stitch them in place using half an inch sewing allowance. This is the front piece and the stitching has been done as you can see. After stitching, I know the same allowances and then I undersick the same allowance to the neckline of the facing. I did the same thing for the back pieces as well. I will now place the two back pieces on top of the front piece like this, right side to right side. I will open up the shoulders like this and I will pin them in place making sure that the shoulder seam lines match up. After pinning, I will take them to my sewing machine and I will stick them in place using half an inch sewing allowance. So now the stitching has been done, as you can see. I will now go ahead and sew the side seams together, right side to right side, using 1 inch sewing allowance. Also fix a zip to the center back of the garment. And this is the final look of the all-round built-up neckline with that. If you find this video helpful, do not forget to give it a thumbs up, drop a comment down below, share this video with your friends who are interested in sewing, and do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. See you in my next tutorial. Bye and thank you so much for watching.